Well, this week saw the passing of the Unionist leader and key figure in the establishment of the Belfast Agreement, Lord David Trimble. Lord Trimble served as the first First Minister of Northern Ireland from 1998 to 2002 and leader of the Ulster Unionist Party from 1995 to 2005, as well as serving in both the House of Commons and the Northern Ireland Assembly. He was famously a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. He's recognised across the globe as one of the pivotal figures in bringing an end to sectarian violence in Northern Ireland, and his death has been met with widespread tributes from Bono to Bill Clinton. Well, with me in the studio now to look at the remarkable life and legacy of David Trimble is his friend, author and historian, Ruth Dudley Edwards. Well, Ruth, um, it's been a very sad time for you as a dear friend of David Trimble, but you've known him for a long time. How did the two of you get together as friends? Because you come from totally different backgrounds. Totally. I mean, I come from a Dublin Catholic background, nationalist. I mean, I was fortunate in that I wasn't, apart from my mad grandmother who lived upstairs, who was an IRA supporter. Yes. Nobody else in my family was inclined towards that. And then I'm, I am an historian by mm. training. So I wasn't a mass of, of, of prejudices, if you, if you like. Yes. But I was at a conference. It was about 1985. And I decided with another friend that we'd, we'd have a party. Because it was all incredibly boring. <laughs> boring, boring, boring. As conference. most conferences are, let's yes, be honest. <laughs> and, and full of academics. And you know, they can grate on you. And I thought we'd try to invite the fun people. Mm. So I made a mental reservation that I wouldn't be inviting that completely silent Northern Irish man who didn't speak to anybody and very, not a very mobile face, really. I mean, mm. he was just looking faintly disapproving, so it seemed to me. But I met him in a corridor later on in my heart. I thought, oh, I should at least ask him. You know, it'd, be, it'd be a gesture. And he won't come anyway. Well, he did come and he stayed till three in the morning. <laughs> And we, we just talked and we really got on. Mm. And I remember that the moment when I said to him, you know, your trouble is that you're permanently two pints under par. <laughs> he thought that was funny. Yeah. Well, of course, he was a law offense. lecturer at that time, but was very much, he was always involved uh, and interested in politics, uh, but became then, I think it was 1990, he became the MP for Upper Ban, wasn't that it? That was right. Yeah. yeah. But he was intensely shy. Yes. I mean, he was enormously articulate, but he was really, really shy. Yeah. So it took time to become friends. But once you're a friend of David's, mm. he was utterly loyal. Yeah. And he had a great sense of humour, which mm -hmm. people didn't realise. Yeah. And I mean, I was just fonder and fonder of him. Mm. And oddly enough, he ended up with quite a few Southern Irish people helping him. I mean, the person who wrote his great speech and mm. um, wrote a lot quite a few contributions to his great speech at the Nobel Prize ceremony, was Irish. Um, he became friends through me with an ex-IRA terrorist called Sean O'Callaghan, who turned against the IRA. Mm. And he was, Sean was his advisor on everything to do with the IRA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we, we all just loved him because he was so honest mm. and straight and brave. I don't think people over here realise how brave he Mm. How brave he had to be, because he was being threatened. <laughs> he could have been assassinated by the mad people from either end of the spectrum. Yes, yes. Because loyalists hated him too, an awful lot of them did. And I think what is lovely, Ruth, is that we've heard a lot about David this week, obviously, because people are paying tribute and they're talking about his courage and his vision and what will be his legacy. But what's lovely to hear from you is the quirkier side of his nature, if you like, and, and the fact that behind all of us, there are different characteristics, aren't there? Oh, absolutely different characteristics. And I had the strange <laughs> experiences that I would be covering, say, um, a violent event in Northern Ireland, especially over the, remember the parades? There were yes. Huge yeah. clashes there, and riots and that sort of thing. And I'd run into David again, who was there in full orange regalia trying to calm the troops down. That was yes. what he was always doing. He was always at the centre of things, trying to, to improve them. So we'd have a chat with mayhem, <laughs> imminent all around us. And the next time we'd meet at some other conference in an Oxbridge college. Yes. Or we might have lunch in London. Mm -hmm. And in London, he had people coming up to him and saying, I, I really admire you. I really respect what you're trying to do for peace. I think you're a great man. And then he would go home and be shouted at yeah. back in Northern Ireland. So he was a different man here. He was much chattier. He, it was easier to make friends. You didn't have to assume somebody was going to assassinate him. And, and I suppose he ended up his life in the House of Lords. And he really enjoyed that, didn't he, Ruth? He utterly loved it because mm. he was a lawyer. 
and David, present David with a few pages of, of, of small print, and he was a happy man. Yeah. There was nothing he liked as much as reading. I mean, he was enormously cultivated. That's what mm. people didn't understand either. Yes, and an opera buff and, uh, and all of that sort of thing as well. Well, Ruth, thank you for coming in and sharing your memories of Lord David Trimble. It's been really lovely to have you in the studio. It's been a pleasure to Thank you. Thank you.